Welcome back, everyone. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to take you uh, into this next segment. We're going to be covering the master exit strategy. Uh, we just finished the trailing stop exit strategy, which is the exit strategy that we just shown you uh, prior to this video. So uh, let's get into the master strategy. I'm going to show you real quick uh, what the description of the master strategy is. Let's go ahead and read it. The master strategy is this icon here. It looks like a, a bunch of colorful puzzle pieces, as you can see. I'm going to left click on that strategy, and let's go ahead and read the short description. Master strategy incorporates multi-level brackets and multi-stage trailing stops, a break-even strategy as well as individual stop loss and profit target strategies. All components interact with each other, which ensures synchronization and fast response time to market changes. So essentially what the master strategy does, it takes all the previous extra strategies that we've already demonstrated and kind of combos, the, uh, combos them all together into one nice package. So you can use whether you want to use a regular profit target or stop loss, uh, you want to use a break even strategy, trailing stop strategy, or bracket. Uh, but ideally the main purpose of the master strategy is to use a multi-level bracket when you're trading multiple contracts. So let's right click on the master strategy and let's go to edit and let's go over some of the parameters that we see within the master strategy itself. So there's a lot of information here. Let's cover uh, each one one by one. Uh, you have a, a maximum of four levels that you can implement, which means that gives you a maximum of four different uh, targets that you scale out of in stop losses, as, as you can see. Uh, right here where it shows QTY, that means quantity. Now one thing that's important by default, the quantity field is set to percentage. As you can see right now, it's uh, it was I've already changed it to a pound, to a pound sign, but when you log on the platform for the first time, it's going to be set to percentages. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use percentages, that's fine. I find it hard just calculating those numbers on the spot as you're trading. So I, for my preference, I like to change that to a pound sign. And what, the, what basically this means is when you scale out at each level, for example, level one shows two there, level two shows a one, level three shows a one. So if I have that set to percentage, and let's say I'm long 10 contracts on the mini S&P, that means 2% of the position, that means 1% of the position, and so forth. So you know, I kind of find it just difficult just calculating that those those numbers on the spot. So I'd rather just be more direct and just say, hey, you know what, I want to peel off two contracts at level one, one contract at level two, and I don't like to deal with the percentages. Uh, however, it's all personal preference. If you want to change it, just a left click on that value, you can see it change. So once you see percentage, it's set based on percentage. If you see the pound sign, it's based on quantity. All right, so that's what that means. And then you have here the different levels. So you have a maximum of four levels. To increase or decrease the levels, just use the up and down arrows. As you can see, if I hit the down arrow, I'm, I'm decreasing the level to level one. I'm maximizing it to four. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And then you're just going to be, you're just going to set your, your values accordingly. So very similar to the bracket order. Uh, let's go ahead and just use, for now, a basic example of four levels. And let's, let's implement a basic master strategy. So I, I, this is ideal, again, if you're going to be trading multiple contracts. If you're just trading one contract, you know, then you can't really scale out of one contract because there's only one contract to peel off. Uh, however, if you trade multiple contracts and you only need one profit target, one stop loss, you don't have any use to use additional levels, then it's just best just to use the, br the regular bracket exit strategy. So it's only you, ideal if you want to have a multi-level bracket. All right, so let's set the values and parameters. We're trading the, uh, the chart that we're looking at behind us is the June mini S&P contract. And I'm going to go ahead and make this very simple. I'm going to keep these values, values here that you see as is. All right, so let's just give you the breakdown. Uh, just like all the extra strategies that we presented earlier, very similar in setting the prices in terms of if you want to do it based on ticks or percentages, you can left click where it shows tick, you can change those percentages. If you want to specify the direct price, you can do it on the left side panel there. Uh, for now, I'm going to use tick. This basically means that these values will be based off the fill price or the average price of where I execute the trade at. So if I Let's say, for example, if I get long from 2090, then a four tick profit target would be 2091, which is one point on the mini S&P. So I'm going to keep this very simple. First profit target will leave at four. The stop loss, as you can see, for all levels, is we're going to keep that as eight ticks, pretty much two points on the mini S&P. Level two will do eight ticks for the profit target, which is two points. Twelve ticks for the profit target on level three, which is three points. And then on the last level, we'll do 16 ticks, which is four points. All right, and then so that what, and then uh, here, if you see in this column here, this is where you're going to specify how many contracts you want allocated at each level. So if I execute, let's say for example, a five lot, then the remainder would be one because if you notice here, two contracts are being peeled off at level one, an additional contract at level two, additional contract at level three, so that's four total. 
If I did a five lot, the remainder would be a value of one. If you did a six lot, the remainder would be two. So the remainder is always going to be the total uh, what's left of your net position based on your allocations that are set at each level. All right, so it's a simple math when it comes to, the, to understanding what the value is going to be uh, for the remainder. And then you have the ability to use break even and trailing stops for each level as well. Uh, if you want to activate those particular functions, you have to left click to check, as you can see I've done. And then very small, if you notice, there's these little, the little box there with three dots. If you left click on that, you can get into the parameter section of either the break even strategy or the trailing stop strategy. All right, since I've already demonstrated how to use the break even and trailing stop strategies uh, in the prior videos, I won't go into detail of how to implement them within the master strategy. As you can see, it's exactly the same. The only difference is you have the ability to use them within the master strategy at each level. The most important thing for you to understand is that you have to check each one of those functions for them to be enabled, and then you have to check or click the three dots there to activate the, the, the values and parameters so you can change them and set your strategy accordingly. All right, for now, I'm going to keep this very straightforward. I'm going to just leave them unchecked. We won't utilize the break even or trailing stop for each level. However, you do have the ability and option to do so if you, if you want to use them. All right, so let's now more parameters here. You'll notice that you can select a different type of order, whether it's a day order, good till cancel, good till day, and so forth. And then what type of stop order you'd like to use, whether it's a stop market or a stop limit. If you decide to use stop limit, just be sure to set the offset value. For now, I'm going to leave these parameters as is. And then the main thing, we want to auto-attach to orders since, as you can see here, I'm not in the position. I'm flat. So I want to be able to apply this strategy to the next position that I establish. All right, so now I have everything in place. Looks good. I'm peeling off two contracts at level one, one at level two, one at level three. And in this example, we're going to execute a five lot. So the remainder will be one. All right, so we're going to hit save. Notice now the check option has been applied on the master strategy, which is letting us know that it's automatically attached. Now let's go ahead and place a limit order. Uh, let's go with a buy limit. Uh, let's uh, better yet. Let's do a sell limit at 2096 even. So I'm going to take my mouse cursor, point it at 2096 on the chart. Right click with my mouse, place order, sell limit. Now actually, the mistake that I made that I was about to point out is I forgot to change the order quantity. So let me go ahead and change that because of course this strategy, based on these values here, is based off five contracts. So of course, if I'm executing a one lot the strategy is not going to work correctly. So that's something that I've actually come across, uh, that uh, a common mistake that I come across. You always have to make sure that you increase the amount of contracts based on how your strategy is set. Otherwise, if you have it set to one, uh, based on the values here, the strategy is not going to work. All right, because this is implementing multiple contracts. All right, so we'll change that to five. Now we're good to go. We'll right click at 2096, place order, and there's a sell limit. All right, and let's... Let's show you now what we're looking at here, okay? So the order has not been filled because the market's at 2089.75. Uh, it's 6.42 p.m. here in California time, so the markets are a bit slow. However, we still have enough information to see what's going on so you have an understanding of how the master strategy is going to work. All right, so let me pull up the master strategy parameters, and let's look at what we see on the chart. All right, so right now, as you can see, I'm selling a June mini S&P contract for five contracts uh, as a limit order at a price of 2096. So that means that the market goes up to 2096. Hopefully we'll get filled. We're going to sell five contracts and at that point we'll be net short five from 2096. Let's take a look at the master strategy now. If you notice the first profit target was four ticks. That means that's a one point profit target from our original entry price. So let's look at level one and also that's for two contracts as you can see here. So let's look at our first profit target. I know it's hard to see, but if you notice that says profit target. I know it's hard to see because the candles are there. And it's transparent because these orders are not working yet because these, the parent order has not been filled just yet. All right, but it's giving you an indication, letting you know that if the order gets filled, then we're going to implement this master strategy. So you see the first profit target, which is four ticks, 2096, 2095, that's correct, for two contracts. The next level profit target is eight ticks for one contract, which is two points from the original entry price. So if you notice from 2096, 94, that's eight ticks for one contract. The third level, 12 tick profit target for one contract, 93, 96, that's correct, that's 12 ticks for one contract. And then the last remaining level, remember we executed a five lot, so we've already allocated four contracts, so the remainder should be one, and it's a 16 tick profit target, which is four points, so 96 is our entry, 92, four points, which is 12 ticks, or better yet, 16 ticks. And now you can see the profit target 
for one contract. So I know it's a little hard to see, my apologies for that, but everything has been set correctly. And if you notice, the stop loss for all four levels is set to eight ticks. So you see one, one, two, and one. So that's two, three, four, five. That's a stop loss for two for eight ticks, which should be a, a buy stop at 2098. As you can see, there's our buy stop for five contracts. All right, so the idea here is the ability to get into these trades uh, and get those orders implemented as an automated process to make you a little more efficient in getting the orders in. But the main benefit, again, is the OCO function. So for example, if I get filled on my first profit target for two contracts, at that point in time, I'm no longer short five, I'm short three, and it's going to automatically cancel the two stop losses here, which will leave the remainder three contracts for stop losses working. So that's going to automatically adjust and allocate as the market starts to peel off those levels. So that's the idea of the master strategy. It gives you the ability to implement the parameters prior to entering the position. And then once you enter the position, that master strategy will be simply implemented uh, based on the example that I just demonstrated. Now, again, if you do forget to auto-attach the strategy, let me go ahead and hit cancel all here. All right, I'm going to go back to the master strategy, go to edit. And if you notice, I got all my parameters still set, but I, I forget to auto-attach the orders. I hit save. I go to place the order, right-click, place order. And now you can see, okay, where did my master strategy go? And that's because then you realize you forgot to auto-attach it. So whenever that happens, uh, do not worry. You still have the ability to apply it. All you, can, all you have to do is right-click on the, on the strategy itself within the extra strategy section. Go to edit. Set your values and parameters. Or better yet, you don't even have to do that. What you can do is just take the extra strategy, click it to highlight it. As you can see, it's highlighted. I'm going to left-click, drag it onto the chart, and drop it right over the working order. Notice when I move the my cursor off the working order, you can see how it, it, there's a disabled icon. So it's letting you know that you can't do anything. You have to hover your mouse cursor over the working order on the chart. Now you can see I can let go of the left click, and then it'll bring up the master strategy parameters. So everything is still the same. I'm going to hit play strategy. And now you can see I have a covering master strategy over that existing working order. All right, so that's one of the big things that I like about multicharts.net. It gives you the ability to implement extra strategies prior or post position. So if you accidentally forget to auto-attach, you can still go back to it and you can still apply the extra strategy just in case you forgot to do that. So I make that mistake uh, plenty of times and sometimes I have to do exactly what I just did by covering the existing working order uh, with an existing strategy that I'd like to use. And then other than that, guys, that is the a short, brief description of the master strategy. And this concludes the extra strategy section. We're going to wrap up this particular segment of the multicharts.net video tutorial in terms of this particular uh, function, which is the entry and extra strategies. We're going to show you one last thing uh, in this next video will be a final recap. We're going to show you how to create templates. Uh, so for example, if you trade multiple markets, uh, you trade mini S&P, you trade crude oil, you trade mini Dow, tick values are always different for every market. So extra strategies might be specific to those markets. And it would be a hassle to go into every extra strategy and change those parameters based on the market you're trading. So I'll show you how to create templates specific for those markets and how to label them, uh, which will make it a little more user-friendly and easier for you to implement those extra strategies moving forward. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.